Hello, Uta here of Trans Widow Uta Hagen channel and of the WordPress blog Uta Hagen Grass Widow WordPress dot com and author of In the Curated Woods, a memoir, one of less than half a dozen uh, written by trans widows who are the ex-wives of men who suddenly are ideating um, into uh, a, a female persona and making all kind of demands of uh, their wives. And we uh, have given up on that. It is not a good um, plan to stay in a marriage like that because of the narcissism and the self-involvement that these guys have, which actually just grows and grows because unlike <laughs> was stated and up on my channel for a while until I took it down, unlike that comment, uh, these uh, surgeries, these hormones, and so on, are not curing the psychiatric illness of cross-sex ideation. If we keep the word gender out of it, it becomes much more clear. Now, I want to read uh, an excerpt that I've reworked a little bit from my published memoir, In the Curated Woods, True Tales from a Grass Widow, uh, that is published by iUniverse and it is available in soft cover and ebook with 50 of my nature photos, nature photography being a method that I use to heal myself from the trauma. Now, uh, the part that I'm going to read now, the excerpt I'm going to read now is the tale of the discovery. Uh, sometimes these guys decide that they will improve their reputation if they are honest and do a revelation. Uh, and in my case, because of his behavior, which will be um, clear uh, as I read it, um, I found out and made a discovery of his lies and his uh, secret cross-dressing life, which at this point I do believe also involved um, escorts, paid escorts, who did role play with him uh, to try it out. This is actually very common. It's, a, it's the little dirty secret that the therapists sweep under the rug as this uh, plays out. So, oh, you might be hearing in my voice that I'm still hearing and seeing <laughs> that I'm still having a little bit of springtime allergies, but I am considerably better than I was before. And so um, and I'm very much enjoying my garden. Um, and uh, you will see the marigolds and the zinnias and everything as they start blooming. All right. This is the tale of the discovery. It was an unforgettably beautiful and sunny, but dreadful day in August, now 30 years gone. Everything changed in the time it took to peruse a few dozen pages of handwritten notes, an official psychological homework practice assigned to my husband by someone I never met. I felt their covers on the first try, nestled precisely in the middle of Nettie's public speaking wardrobe. This was in his suitcase. In this position to avoid any bent corners. I considered that predictable, knowing his logic and habits for 17 years, as I did. The approximate date remains in mind because my older sister's daughter was married two days later up in Madison, Wisconsin. I'd traveled alone with Elon and Oren, four and one, overnight on the Lakeshore Limited from New York to Chicago. I spent one night in my in-law's apartment alone with the children there on Irving Park Road near Lincoln Park, our children eagerly anticipating their father's arrival. Near Lake Michigan there, 
We had manicured playgrounds, ball fields, and a cute little zoo to visit. My in-laws building was one of the cheaper 1960s builds in the area. Like so many high-rises there, this one occasionally swayed a bit in the Chicago winds. The apartment was on the 37th floor, and I was fortunate the windows were not designed to open. In my mind's eye, I saw myself falling through the air, past all those rows of windows, after reading the legible but incomprehensible lines of precise printing. I calculated they originated back to about the first trimester of my second pregnancy, written in a frequency of about twice or three times a week, it appeared. Nettie then arrived from his San Francisco business trip. All of his body hair shaved off. I saw that right away. But we were in the car with his parents coming back from O'Hare, so I couldn't even sign a gesture to question about it. Don't let him touch my tie. It cost $50, he exclaimed, pushing our four-year-old's eager arms out of reach. I had no idea he was buying such expensive ties, too. He took them off to roll up and stow in his briefcase before arriving home for the night in Brooklyn after days working in an academic institution in Manhattan. I was aware of the bespoke shirts and a couple of Pierre Cardin three-piece suits, as well as expensive shoes. The loafers were the kind you see Ralph Lauren, you see in Ralph Lauren ads with little tassels and fringes. I look back on those little femininities expressed through traditional male clothing, only now understanding the special meaning my husband imbued to them. At the time, I hadn't a clue. I was still wearing my old pregnancy outfits and falling for the idea that Nettie needed the swanky business wardrobe to get the next more prestigious job, the one that would put our little family solidly on middle-class footing. I look, ah, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I listened and watched my husband's studied movements for a day or two of confusion. I then found the diaries while packing the children's belongings. I read parts of each of the three journals in a kind of panic I had never felt before. I retrieved them as soon as he and the children with my mother-in-law exited the apartment to visit the park while I finished getting clothes folded and organized. Suddenly I held the three sketchbooks in my hands, shaking, numb. At first I assumed he must be conducting some kind of kinky affair. The journals were sketchbooks with black covers and drawing paper inside. Nettie had instructed me firmly, Don't open my suitcase. I'm done packing. Those words and the wiry hair missing from his arms activated some kind of worm in my brain. I was surprised that the suitcase wasn't locked, but then being locked would have made it more suspicious. Or perhaps he'd lost the keys. My father-in-law was in his office, where he did his freelance writing, behind a closed door, just a few feet away. I silently sobbed while reading the familiar eccentric printing, saying, I have to admit I'm a transsexual. I always was, and Ruth confirmed it. Standing for ten minutes or so while I feverishly read, I then sat at the dinner table to take it in. I skimmed over the various topics, the annoyance of an interrupting young child, his habit of asking the same thing over and over, and still, but why? Nettie wrote this resentment about my excitement over new baby pictures, how I'd eagerly fish in his briefcase for the envelope brought home from the photo lab. I'd become a caricature, a scold, an inconvenience in his emphatic and crisp writing style. There were also m many detailed descriptions of the outfits, the hair dilemmas, and the attention men were paying to Nettie in the bars he was frequenting. I felt dizzy and desperate. 
I should have ripped out a few pages and hidden them. I just did not possess the deception bone and wasn't able to think fast enough. I listened for the sounds of my father-in-law in the next room. My in-laws hadn't noticed the clean-shaven skin on their son's arms and legs. I found this incomprehensible, a weight formed in my chest, robbing me of something I couldn't define. After the bus ride to Madison, I woodenly greeted my 73-year-old parents. Not hungry, I pretended to eat my mother's meatballs and potatoes with gusto, her Norwegian meatballs with a zing of ginger and nutmeg, always served with potatoes, were on the menu whenever guests arrived. We attended the wedding, a rather tony affair, in the old Fess Hotel on Capitol Square. After the reception, I slept on the floor in my sister's apartment loaned to us for the occasion. Nettie didn't offer to take the couch. I, lie, I lay awake, trying to shut off my brain. That's my experience of the discovery. It's always a shock. Uh, writing about it brings it back, and you do feel some of the panic, However, when you have put it into as, as logical and eloquent and expressive prose as you can, then some of the trauma does float away. I also have just discovered this doctor of chiropractic, Dr. Alan um, Mandel, who has a YouTube channel called Inspirational Doc, D-O-C, all one word. And uh, he has a lot of kind of homeopathic pressure point uh, techniques for relaxation and relief from stress. And I am trying them out. And some of them I was actually just intuitively doing, such as the tapping on your sternum. Isn't that interesting? It does have something to do with calming down the vagus nerve. Now, I suggest also that anyone experiencing the actual trauma and stress of cross-sex ideation and feeling like you're disconnected from your body, I think that movement uh, such as in my wellness playlist, where you go to the uh, name of the channel and then find the playlist up on top, as well as these pressure point um, de-stressors, I think that that could actually help someone with this uh, particular psychiatric illness. And uh, one could potentially desist and come back to wellness mentally and physically. Because if you do these medicalizations to make your body approximate the opposite sex, your uh, risks of being unwell are extremely increased. And I never saw Nettie really looking happy <laughs> after he did all of this. That's just the way it is. Be sure to weed out those dandelions and garlic mustard and the cow parsley.